подкрепим. Пожалуйста. So this is going to be a really brief uh, overview or presentation of uh, currently existing uh, lipotriptors, including pneumatic, ultrasound, and laser. So I'm going to touch base on, uh, on I'm going to um, look into uh, basics of pneumatic, ultrasonic, and laser uh, lipotriptors and comparison data, and we'll make some conclusions. So. Pneumatic lip strips are, it uses um, the jackhammer motion um, using the compressed air to physically propel probe against stone. And uh, there are several advantages and um, limitations of pneumatic lip strips. And uh, advantages include extremely safe compared to uh, ultrasonic and laser technology. It generates significantly low heat, um, it generates significantly less heat and uh, it's non-electric and electric, electric and require, requires compressed gas. So limitations include motion uh, may displace a stone because it's, um, as I mentioned, jackhammer motion, you know, significantly moves the stone and you may need to pin the stone, pin the stone against the uh, surface of the stone and on the surface of the epithelium in order to, um, to remove the stone. So it creates large uh, stone fragments, which, uh, you know, it's, it makes challenging to uh, remove the stone uh, or suck it out uh, with a suction device. And uh, these devices can be used only with uh, rigid and endoscopic devices. And currently existing pneumatic devices include uh, Stonebreaker from Cook um, and uh, a Swiss Lipid class from EMS. So this, this is the only study that I was able to find, uh, basically um, clinical eva evaluation of uh, these intracorporeal um, devices. And this study actually from India, from Dr. Gupta, he evaluated 102 patients. Um, of these, 49 patients underwent percutaneous nipple lithotomy, four, uh, 48 patients uh, uteroscopy, and five bladder patients. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, were also managed uh, percutaneously. Um, all, of, all of these patients were uh, managed using Stonebreaker, and uh, they reported that there was no um, evidence of urethral trauma on histopathological evaluation, and uh, all patients were rendered stone-free after uh, one procedure. So what about ultrasonic lip Um This creates mechanical uh, stone fragmentation using high-frequency ultrasonic waves to cause rapid vibration of the device. So um, again, this, uh, these devices have their own advantages and limitations. And um, as I mentioned, compared to pneumatic devices, ultrasonic devices, they create significantly less um, stone movement, which you know, uh, helps you to uh, fragment the stones and efficiently and, um, uh, remove them in a timely manner. Um, and another uh, advantage is that it creates really small uh, particles, which uh, makes it really easy to use the suction device. Um, and limitations include um, it's not very efficient with hard stones, and I'm going to touch by, um, I'm going to touch about that and talk about that a little later with some uh, nice graphs. And um, you have to really apply pressure on the stone in order to break it. And um, again, it can be used only with uh, rigid scopes. And uh, there are only two uh, devices, ultrasonic devices, that currently exist in the market, and it's from Olympus and. Uh, Carl Stokes. Um, this is actually a study in kind of old, older study from uh, Dr. Lingaman's team. They compared uh, five ultrasonic devices um, in an in vitro, no, in, in in vitro uh, setting using the gypsum uh, stones, and their primary outcome was completely stone, complete stone fragmentation. And um, uh, actually, Olympus uh, LOS2 device was shown to be the fastest, and um, other devices were equally um, efficient. And combination devices, combining pneumatic and uh, ultrasonic um, are Cyberland and uh, Lithoclass uh, Ultra. And um, there are multiple studies that, uh, that exist that compare a single modality versus combination devices. And um, this is a study from Duke University from Dr. Preminger's team. They actually compared um, Lithoclast, which is pneumatic device, as I mentioned, Olympus, which is ultrasound, and Lithoclast Ultra, which combines both. And they, this setting was also um, 
uh, in vitro, and uh, they use vegaform uh, uh, gypsum stones. And um, the primary outcome of the study was complete stone fragmentation and um, time to clearance. And as expected, <clears throat> combination device, combination of ultrasonic and pneumatic uh, devices was most efficiently in terms of time and um, the size of the uh, fragments created and the, con the um, <clears throat> so another in vitro comparison from Dr. Lingeman's group, uh, which compared with the class Ultra and Cyber One, which are both uh, combination devices. They both com combine pneumatic and ultrasonic devices, and they cr they created uh, in vitro standardized um, uh, setting and used uh, similar uh, gypsum stones. And um, what they you know primary outcome of the study was uh, complete stone penetration. And what the study showed is that um, Cyber One was actually uh, faster uh, than with the class Ultra. Um, so we talked a little bit about the t uh, efficiency in um, creating smaller fragments. And now I think the most important uh, factor that uh, uh, in terms of evaluating these devices is the tissue damage. Um, so th this is a study from Dr. Monga's group from Cleveland Clinic. They actually uh, uh, performed in vitro study comparing uh, two combination devices, including both the class Ultra and Cyber Wand. And uh, they used porcine ureter, uh, renal pelvis, and bladder tissue. And the conclusion was that uh, Cyber Wand was more likely to cause perforation compared to uh, with the class Ultra. Um, <clears throat> and because this is, Surprising result because both Cyber One and Lithoclast both are very similar combined device, but um, what they showed is that increased pressure on tissue, increase, um, on the tissue that you're applying to, increased perforation of like, you know, perforation likelihood, which is uh, expected. Uh, so laser devices. Um, laser uses optical source that emits photons in a coherent beam to deliver energy directly at target. Uh, there are several, several advantages and limitations uh, as well to uh, laser devices. And uh, main advantage, I guess, would be that it can be used with flexible endoscopes, but with cystoscopy, uteroscopy, and flexible nef nephroscopy, and um, does not require any pr pressure to be placed on the stone, which probably uh, benefits in terms of tissue trauma. And uh, limitations include that um, it can damage very quickly close distance, so very, um, th these uh, laser uh, devices can, uh, you should be used very um, carefully. Um, very often it damages, if you uh, don't use it very carefully, it can uh, damage your guide wires, stone baskets, and, and scopes uh, as well. So briefly about, um, so this is a lip assist uh, that was uh, designed um, in, in collaboration with Cook and our team from UC Irvine that uh, basically combine suction device and uh, laser device. So, um, and we did uh, a small in vitro study comparing lip assist to um, with a class ultra combined device and we used similar um, gypsum stones comparing five, between, five for um, with a class and 10 heart stones for lip assist. And what our results showed is that when you use these devices for stone, uh, soft stones, <coughs> as expected, lithoclast was, you know, efficient in frag at fragmentation and removing the stones, and uh, lithosis was less efficient in, the, in that regard, and when we used hard stones, which is equivalent to um, high density, high density stones, uh, which is, you know, high, high household unit stones, um, lithoclast ultra was not able even to fragment the stone, um, and lip assist, and then we used a thousand micron uh, laser fibers, and it was uh, really efficient compared to with the class ultra. So, <clears throat> what are the advantages of lip assist? So, it, it's lightweight and, and, and it has a really ergonomic design, which allows the surgeon intuitively uh, control the you know, suction device and uh, laser capabilities at the same time, and it allows you to use any laser fiber that you prefer. Um, and, you know, you can choose based on the stone 
density <clears throat> from 365 to 1,000 microns. And <clears throat> very important is device setup is easy, it's very intuitive for the surgical team. Um, and you know, I haven't seen this device tailored and in the operating room. So in conclusions, all these devices have high success rates for many different uh, respiratory devices. And uh, as I mentioned, all of these devices have uh, their uh, advantages and limitations. And uh, based on the stone type and you know, case of you know, type of procedure you're performing, I think surgeon preference is important. And uh, further clinical studies are needed to um, elucidate you know, efficiency of the, and efficacy of these um, devices in a clinical setting. Thank you.